Good evening, everybody. My name is David Weisberg. I'm the CEO of the Federation for Jewish Philanthropy of Upper Fairfield County. You know, it, it occurs to me that, that every year uh, folks either say that the high holidays are, are early this year or they're late this year. And I, you know, I want to make the announcement that this year it seems like the high holidays in Rosh Hashanah is actually happening right on time. It's, it's right around the corner. And I think at a time that so many of us are yearning for a new year, uh, it's so nice to see Rosh Hashanah uh, coming around the bend. And, and you know, clearly it's going to be a different kind of high holidays uh, for so many of us. I think for everybody, uh, whether they're participating in services in person or virtually, it's going to be different for everybody. And, and being that one of the um, you know, mitzvot of, uh, of this season is, is hearing the show for blow. We know that so many of us are gonna have to take that into our own hands this year. Uh, and so as a service to you in our community, we thought um, nothing more important right now than a, than a show for blowing 101, which we're so pleased to present to you tonight with our partners from the Merkaz Community High School of Judaic Studies and Beit Havarim. I first wanna introduce uh, my partner and friend, uh, Shelly Krieger, who is the director of the Merkaz Community High School of Judaic Studies. And I know, Shelly, one of the reasons we're doing this is Merkaz has an event uh, next Wednesday called the Great Shofar Blast. And hopefully this will prepare everyone to be able to participate with full vigor and full skill. Um, can you share a little bit about what the Great Shofar Blast is? Sure, David, and thanks for working with Merkaz um, to um, make the partnership between Federation again and Beit Havarim to make Shofar 101 happen. Um, it seemed to be the perfect sequence to begin with this workshop tonight so that next Wednesday, September 16th at four o'clock, we're inviting the entire community to come in their cars and we're going to have a car parade around the Jewish senior services. We have to all remember that the residents there are still shut in and isolated and Hollander House um, as well. And we're going to encircle the building. It takes about 50 to 60 cars to do that based on our prior parades. So we need everybody on this call to bring a friend and to bring another car and bring a shofar. We will have toy shofars for kids. We will have kazoos as well for younger children. But we want um, adults and teens and everyone to show the seniors at Jewish Senior Services how important they are to us and how important it is for us in the community to make sure they're able to fulfill the mitzvah of hearing the sound of the shofar. So thank you for working with us. Shelly, thank you so much. And um, I'm going to say goodbye to you for the moment, but we'll bring you back at the end to remind everyone of the details and, and, and to blow your shofar for everybody uh, <laughs> once you've learned some, uh, some skills from, from Rabbi Greg. So thank you so much. And uh, I'm pleased to introduce um, uh, someone who I consider a, not only a rabbi, but a really good friend. He is the rabbi at... Uh, Beit Havarim Synagogue in Westport. He is the jazz rabbi of our community. He occasionally jumps up on stage with my band, which is a pleasure for me. Uh, and he's one of the few people who was a friend of mine in this community when I got here. When I got here uh, four years ago, he was one of the, the couple people that I already knew and was so delighted to see uh, when I landed here. So, so Rabbi Greg Wall, um, thanks so much for, uh, for teaching us tonight. My pleasure, David. What a treat to be here. And uh, you're right, Rosh Hashanah is just on time, just in the nick of time, I might add. So, you know, we, we advertise this as learning how to blow the shofar. Um, but it's clear that part, you know, blowing the shofar is more than just getting a sound out of a horn. Um, the how includes the why, uh, because in order to do it properly, you need to not just get sound out of it, 
you need to do it with, with intention and doing it with intention means understanding why you're doing it. I, you know, I imagine um, that you have some holy intentions when you're playing the jazz saxophone, <laughs> um, but you probably have a different set of holy intentions when you're blowing the shofar. And so I thought it would be helpful for us to first to learn before how we physically do it, how do we mentally and emotionally and spiritually prepare to blow the shofar by understanding why we're doing what we're doing? What a great question. That's a great place to start. So hello, everybody. Um, so a full disclosure, um, I am an Orthodox rabbi, although a very unorthodox Orthodox rabbi. So I take my cues uh, from our tradition and especially what's in our Torah. So I figured that'd be a good place to start because really we want to, before we even make a sound out, we want to know why it is that we're doing. So if someone asked you, why did Jews blow the shofar, or at least hear it, you don't have to blow it, but in the age of COVID when uh, you might not have access to hear someone and you've got to do it yourself. So let's go take a look at just a few sources I took the liberty to put on all in one spot. Let me just share my screen. And I want to say, while you're doing that, if anyone has questions as we're going through this, uh, please feel free to type them into the chat function, and I'll be able to communicate those to Rabbi Greg. And then we will have an opportunity at the end uh, for those who have questions or who want to take a shot at demonstrating the skills that they've learned in this 45-minute session of Blowing the Chauffeur. We can bring you on screen and you can play for us. Great. Okay, so the first place that we hear that something is up on Rosh Hashanah is the actual source of Rosh Hashanah in the Torah. And this comes from the book of Leviticus, Sefer Vayikra, as we call it. And the verse says, Vedeber Hashem el Moshe Limor, God spoke to Moses saying, speak to the Israelites in the seventh month on the first day of the month. By the way, if you've lost count, that's next Friday night. You shall observe complete rest, a sacred occasion, remembering the trua. You shall not work at your occupations, and you shall bring an offering by fire to the Lord. Wow, sounds very, uh, very austere, sounds very fancy. But there's a word that's missing from there. The word is, well, this what blank 101, this is shofar 101. It doesn't say shofar. It says that it is going to be uh, Shabbaton Zichron Trua. Huh, interesting. Rosh Hashanah talks about some type of sound, but it doesn't say shofar. We get another instruction on, uh, from this time from the Book of Numbers from Sefer Bamidbar, and a little more condensed. Bechodesh Shavi, Bechad Lechodesh Mikra Kodesh, Lechem, that the seventh month on the first day is going to be a holiday for you, and Kol Malacha Avodah Lo Ta'asu, take the day off, don't, uh, don't go to work. Yom Trua Yelechem. It is a day of Trua. Huh, interesting. What is a Trua? So we're going to get back to that. But we need to use some rabbinic sleight of hand. Actually, we call it the oral tradition, the Torah Shabbal Peh. And that teaches us through a complicated process that I'm not going to go into right now, that the trua has to be made on the shofar. Now, why didn't the Torah just come and say that in the first place? Well, it wouldn't be as much fun. Yeah, sometimes you have to work for something you really appreciate it. Okay, so now we know we need to blow a trua on a shofar on Rosh Hashanah. And that is the mitzvah of the day. I'm going to do a mitzvah. Hear the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. That's the mitzvah of the day. Now, why the shofar? Why? What's special about the shofar? We have musical instruments in the Torah. We have the chatzot's We have the silver trumpets. And the Torah talks about all the places they pull those out. You know, but it's a famous trumpet place. You heard of Gabriel? Um, anyway, the first time we hear about the shofar in the Torah is actually at Mount Sinai. And the soundtrack of Mount Sinai was, you guessed it, the shofar. But he called it shofar holech v'chazek ma'od, and the, the, the sound the, the, of, of the shofar came, and it was really, really strong. And Moshe Deber, 
Elohim Yaanenu Beko. And Moshe would speak, and God would answer in a sound. Now, it's funny, this translation translated coal as thunder, but really, it's the same word we have in the beginning, coal shofar. Coal means a sound. It's a voice. It's a sound. So we might even say that the sound of God that the people saw at Mount Sinai, yep, I said saw, because if you read the good book, it says they saw the sound. What did they see? They saw the sound of a shofar. So interesting. Now that makes a lot of sense. Mount Sinai, and now Rosh Hashanah, and we've got the shofar in full bloom. You know, what's the shofar supposed to do? We know we're supposed to play it. We're supposed to, uh, to do it on Rosh Hashanah. It's a mitzvah from the Torah. Why? What is the, the feeling that we're supposed to have? And this is a good thing for a shofar blower to know. You always have to know your audience. So... Well, we actually have two tasks at hand. One comes from the book of Isaiah. And Isaiah talks about the shofar. And he, he says, uh, shofar. On that day, the, the shofar, the great shofar is going to be sounded and the strayed who are in the land of Assyria and the expelled who are in the land of Egypt, basically everyone's in exile, shall come and worship the Lord on the holy mount in Jerusalem. Oh, this seems to be a message of redemption. Everybody's going to be coming back. Wow, what a great thing to, uh, to, to blow the shofar um, for on Rosh Hashanah. And, you know, some t- in, in, encoded in the Rosh Hashanah services, for those of you that are able to go to services, you'll see that we, we talk about, uh, you know, the, the remembering that what we have in store for us. But there's a contrasting way to look at the sound of the shofar. And from the book of Amos, in tika'a shofar be'ir va'ahalam lo yeradu im tiyera be'ir v'hashem lo asa. Wow, this is almost like a warning. When the shofar is sounded in the city, don't people start shaking? The shofar is like an alarm clock. Interesting. The shofar is supposed to wake us up but we're also supposed to know that this means that the redemption is close. Huh, interesting. Okay, so now we know why we blow the shofar and we know what note do we play. You our saxophone and say, okay, I'll play a B flat, I'll play a D, I'll play an A flat, but what's a trua? Well, it's a good question. It's a good question. But luckily, we have a translator for the Torah. The first translator, before we had this nice English translation, we had an Aramaic translation. And the Aramaic translation was done by uh, someone named Unculus Hager. So he teaches us based on, and here, this again is the, 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 the source from the book of Numbers, when it says, uh, Yom Teruwa Yielachem. So, Onkelos over here, and how's your Aramaic? If not, I'll, I'll, I'll read it for you. He says, instead of Yom Trua Yelachem, he says, Yom Libava Yelachon. It should be day of Yabava. Oh, <laughs> why didn't you say so? What does that mean? That's an even better question. In fact, this is one of those words that only shows up once in the entire Hebrew Bible. And you're never gonna guess where this word shows up. Anybody ever hear of the story of Yael and Sisera? This is from uh, the Song of Devorah. Devorah was a, uh, was a shofetet. She was a judge, a really uh, a very, very important person in Jewish history in the land of Israel. And they uh, were under siege by a no good nickname, Sisera. And Sisera went out to try to destroy the Jewish people. What else is new? And this woman named Yael was so brave, and she concocted this scheme. When he came and he was looking for water, she gave him salty milk, and he got thirsty, and then he fell asleep, and then she put him out of his misery. She saved the Jewish people by getting rid of this no-good guy, Sisera. And Devorah writes this song about the whole story, And at the end of the story, when it's obvious that Sisera is not coming home, and and the 
and, 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 and the Bible gives you the perspective of Sisera's mother. And it says, through the window peered Sisera's mother. Behind the lattice, she whined, she cried, she whimpered, she groaned. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why so late the clatter of his heels? And wouldn't you know, if we look inside the Hebrew, and it says, Ba'ad HaChalon, from out the window, Nishkafa Va Te Ya Bev. Wow, there's that word. It means the cry of a mother. It's the cry, the anguish of a mother. But not just a mother, the mother of our worst enemy, and that's the sound of the shofar. <sighs> wow, that's very interesting. Very interesting. So um, a shofar blower has a lot on their mind when we do this mitzvah, because now we see from this last story that in our triumph, in our historical delight, we always have to have empathy for everybody. Even the mother of a no good Nick, we need to have her feelings in mind. If we want God to be merciful to us on Rosh Hashanah, we need to be merciful. So built into the shofar is that quality too. Wonderful. It's a wonderful thing. You can spend a lot of time. But let's get down to the, the fun part, which is actually blowing the shofar. Now, there are many different types of shofrot. I've got a couple here I'll show you. This is the one that I'll be blowing most likely on, on, on Sunday. David's got one there. Uh, look the same. So this is a pretty, uh, this is your standard ram's horn. It's got one little curve in it. Now, we actually have, uh, it's got a little twist too. Sometimes the twists they put in afterwards, they heat them up. I have another one that I got from uh, a, a, a sheep farmer in, uh, in Tel Aviv. And uh, this is a beautiful one. I like it, but uh, I don't play it as much. And then I have the horn of a kudu. And uh, this is very popular in the Yemenite traditions. And uh, not only are they really cool, but they're very easy to play. Very easy to play. So, you know, start with this one. And by the way, all you have to do to blow a shofar is just buzz your lips. <laughs> This has got a nice low sound to it because it's long, long column of air. It's a higher pitch sound. talk about an alarm clock this one will wake everybody up um especially my neighbors so i don't play it before uh, if, if somebody's looking for a shofar that's that's easier to play what makes that longer shofar easier for for someone who is just uh you know who's not adept at doing this mm -hmm. um, um, what, what are they looking for well, it, it actually, it's not something that's um, inherent in the size, although the long ones tend to be lower because you don't need as much resistance. Uh, but this one is very, very easy um, to blow. It has to do with the size of the opening. So when people actually make a shofar, if they make a nice large opening, relatively speaking, and have a larger chamber, well, then it's, uh, it, 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 it's, uh, it's less resistance and it's, and it's easier uh, to produce the sound. You can't get as loud a sound. So this will be good for more of, uh, of uh, more whimpering and less alarm clock. Uh, and as you could hear, I don't know how well it translates through the, uh, through the internet, but uh, that other one, that, that little shofar that I, I just played, uh, has got a very, very powerful sound. Um, now, how do we, what's, what's the mitzvah? So the mitzvah is to blow a trua. Okay, we sort of know what a trua is, but we only know in a poetic sense, right? It's a trua. It's crying. The Talmud in Rosh Hashanah has a delicious 
discussion about this. What did the sound of Sisera's mother crying sound like? And one rabbi said, well, it sounded like a groan, like this. Oh, oh, oh. And someone said, no, it sounded like a whimper. Oh, 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 oh. And another rabbi said, you know, people would start groaning. And as they cry, as they get more upset, it changes. So it starts off with the groan. And now you have the three opinions of what a trua sounds like. Is it the whimper, the groan rather, Or is it a fast crying? Or is it both? Well, two Jews, three opinions. So we do all three opinions. And you'll notice in Shul, on Rosh Hashanah, or if you're doing it at home for your family because it's not safe where, where you are to go to synagogue, then you'll do all three. Now, the, the same discussion that actually proved that we play the trua on a shofar also told us that um, the, the, each, each trua needs to be part of a sandwich between two longer sounds, and that's called uh, tekiya. So we're always going to have a tekiya and then a trua, whatever we think the trua is. We're going to do actually three different types. And then we have another tekiya. Trua, tekiya, trua, tekiya. I'm going to do the one that uh, is going to have uh, both uh, types of crime. is one set. We call that a tashrat. Tekiya shvarim, trua tekiya. And uh, typically we'll do three of those. And then we'll do uh, three sets with just the shvarim, that groaning sound, and then three with what we'd call the trua. And if you add all those sounds up, uh, the first set is actually three sets of four, and then two sets of three, we have 30 sounds. You want to do a mitzvah? On Rosh Hashanah, listen to all 30 sounds. You don't have to listen to 100, although we have a tip, but we have a tradition of 100. Um, most synagogues are not going to be blowing 100 this year. We want to keep people uh, in synagogue as short a time as possible to be able to do the mitzvah. But most of the time you do 100. Why 100? You'll never believe this. The story about Sisera's mother that I told you about, has just about 100 words. There's actually 101 words. So we take one off because of association. She was the mother of a no good Nick, but the other 100 we do. Anyway, that is the shofar. One last point and then I'll turn it back to David. How long do these notes need to be? And there actually is a, an order for it that each one of those shvarim, those groaning sounds, has to be as long as three of the cries. So if this is the, the, the truer sound. So here's three. So what I do when I'm playing a set, I, while I'm blowing the tekiya, I'm going to have in mind what follows it. Is it the long set with three shvarim and three trua? Then I'm going to make sure that in my head, 
my tekiah is long enough to, to be equal or a little longer than the sound of the trua that I'm going to do. And then the tekiah afterwards will be the same. So naturally, the tekiah that surrounds either just the groaning sound or just the crying sound can be a little shorter. And that's a lot of times what I think about while I'm playing the shofar. Uh, some synagogues will have somebody with a watch and they know how long it takes. And that way, you know, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have someone do that, you don't have to think about it. So if I don't think about how long the songs are, what do I think about? I'm actually praying, please God, make the note come out. Because everyone's dependent on me. You know, that there's one shofar blower doing the mitzvah for everybody. So if I'm thinking about, you know, uh, you know uh, whether or not the, the Yankees won, um, it's going to be a problem. So I really try to stay focused. Anyway, um, I'd love to, uh, uh, to hear what, uh, what people sound like playing the chauffeur. David, what do you got on your mind now? I well, I'm going to ask you a few questions. But sure. before I do that, I want to invite anybody who has a shofar and wants to come on screen and, uh, and uh, demonstrate your technique to us or, or learn you know, what you're doing right or wrong. Uh, if you raise your virtual hand, and you have your uh, your camera on, uh, then I'll bring be able to bring you on screen for a couple for in a couple minutes. Uh, Rabbi Greg, I have a few questions. I guess the first one is just a very technical one. You know, I've I've had a show far. I'd really love to be able to do what you do. You showed us very quickly. You know, just how you blow with your mouth. Um, but I know that once this is over, I'm going to try it, and it's just not going to work. You know, it's like when I try to do yoga at home and there's not a teacher there, I know that I'm not doing the right position. So what do I need to do? What do I need to practice? How do I do this right? Buzz your lips. That's it. And That's just, it. And just keep trying till I get it right. I didn't change. That's actually a great practice to do at home. Uh, trumpet teachers do that sometimes to trumpet students. They buzz, and, uh, and then you bring the horn to the lips and take it away so the buzz is consistent. That's the most important thing about getting a sound is keeping that air moving. Now, right. same thing on a saxophone. So this is something that came easy to me because I was already a saxophonist. But that's where the similarities stop. So second quick question, anything you're thinking about differently this year in chauffeur blowing in uh, the COVID-19 era? Um, no, um, I think that uh, you know, I, 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 have, I have in mind that, uh, that God should uh, be responsive to our prayers. Um, every minute that we pray, we're praying for different things because human beings are dynamic. We're always in a different situation. Um, and yet we want to be answered where we are right now. Um, and uh, so this is a very, very uh, challenging time. But on the other hand, um, we have so much to be grateful for to, as, as well, you know, and, and especially in, in my community. I know people have had a rough time um, with work, but in, in my community, um, I haven't had to deal with that. Um, I've had to deal with the opposite. You know, sometimes that when everything's going good for you, it's a lot easier to, uh, to, to close the window shade and not look out the window like Cicero's mother and just say, well, everything is good here. But we can't do that. Um, right. and, well, know, I assume we also, you know, from a very practical sense this year, we have to be careful not passing the chauffeur around from person to person. Well, absolutely, absolutely. And don't blow it close to anybody. Now, I'm blowing the chauffeur outside i'm going to be far from everybody but if i had to be in a confined space you know those um the uh the disposable face masks that people wear i would just take it and put it right over the top of of the chauffeur it doesn't really change the sound at all it doesn't and those of you who are wondered if, if is that is that kosher yeah it's kosher as long as it sounds like a, a shofar it's okay can you if you plate your shofar in gold it's not going to sound like a shofar it's going to sound like a trumpet um and then that that might be a, a problem it would be a problem but um as far as uh as trying to to keep the aerosol to a minimum absolutely we could do that and inside i would really say that everyone should do that 
Great. So I'm going to ask you one, one more question. And as you're answering it, I'm going to bring onto the screen Art Gang and anybody else who raises their virtual hand and is ready uh, to join us. Um, I heard you ask a question a f maybe a year or so ago, or you didn't ask it, you posed it to others. Uh, if you are walking past a synagogue on Rosh Hashanah and you inadvertently hear the shofar, are you fulfilling the mitzvah of hearing it? So we talked about the intention of the person blowing it. What about the intention of those listening to it? Absolutely. Absolutely. They need equal intention. They need equal intention. So uh, it's more, it's, it's common that someone blowing a shofar, especially if they're in a synagogue, they're going to have in mind that other people will be listening and they will include them in their intention. Now, um, a lot of shofar uh, blowers, uh, and I try to be one of these, have in mind that if someone should be walking in the door or hearing the shofar through the window as I'm blowing it, that I'm intending for anybody who hears it that wants to do the mitzvah to be included in my shofar bus. But it works the other way around too, that someone's going by and they heard the shofar and they say, okay, I heard the shofar today. No, we, we really need to, 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 to have in mind, I am doing the mitzvah of shofar. Otherwise, it's just a nice noisemaker. But if we have intention that we want to do the mitzvah, then it becomes the kol shofar and we can do the mitzvah. Right. Uh, it's good to see you, Art Gang and, uh, and the whole gang. Thank you, David, and thank you, Rabbi. It's a wonderful presentation. Unfortunately, we have to leave fairly quickly, and I'm sure you'll want us to <laughs> after hearing the blow. But we've got the whole King family here. Nice. <laughs> One. Two. And we really haven't done this before, but we're trying because we have the three shofars. All right, sounds and great. We clean them today. <laughs> we clean them. We yeah. clean them for the occasion. Are we trying? Yeah. <laughs> I know that. I know that that sounds like the end of the Music Man, but <laughs> it's the thing says by Barney. <laughs> well, as the old Yiddish proverb says, "Don't quit your day job." No, just kidding. Um, it's, 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 that sounds great, you know? And the end of the music, man, was music to the, the ears of the parents of the kids. Right. And that is music to God's ears. The end of the music, man, is, is all about intention. That's exactly right. That's right. right. It's, that's, that's what the think system is about, isn't whether you have the ability to play, but whether you have it in your head. That's right. Um, so it's a, it's a great metaphor. And, and thank God we've all seen the, the music, man. <laughs> and one of us had to spend a week at a casino in Nevada playing Marcellus. Um. <laughs> wow. Very much. So, it's wonderful and this inspiring. This is a lot of fun. Listen, I, this is the first chauffeur gang that I've ever come across. <laughs> and thank you very, very much. It's really uh, putting me that much closer to, uh, to Rosh Hashanah. Thank you. And Rosh Toba, and everyone stay well and yes. safe. And I think Rachel is joining us on screen in a moment. Rachel, who I, I believe you played um, at her wedding. Hi, Rachel. Hi. That was um, 18 years ago, almost. I remember. Crazy. I remember. OK, so my husband, Rich, is going to play Shofar for you. Hang on. OK, great. Here we go. <laughs> Wow, you got a ringer there. That sounds great. Bravo. <laughs> Thank you for this, Yashar Kal. Thank you, Greg. Yashar Kal. Thank you so Sanato much. Va. Healthy year to you. Wow. Thanks, Rich. I know we, we've got just a few minutes, and you've got to get somewhere else soon. Um, you know, tell me what your record is for Takiya Gadola. I never counted. But we could try to set a record now if you want. We don't. We don't have to try to set a record. Do you, do, do you judge yourself based on it? Do I? No. I mean, yeah. I, I just uh, I do the longest one I can. But I know every year that my congregants or someone's timing me. They they always do. I know. Mm -hmm. 
All right, well, well th I'm going to bring Shelly back on as a panelist to rejoin us again. I'm going to ask her to start her video so she can be back with us. And maybe Shelly has a question as well. Hi, Shelly. David. Hi, Rabbi Greg. Thanks so much. This was fabulous. When we started to talk about it a few weeks ago, I had no idea where it would go. And I think tonight has been just scintillating. And besides, I got to see my daughter and son-in-law on the screen all the way from Virginia. So that was a nice surprise for me. Um, Rabbi. Shali. Does it matter how old you are to play the shofar? No. Is it a age unlimited mitzvah? It, there is a, oh, so to play the shofar? To blow shofar. Uh, to blow the shofar for other people, someone would need to be obligated to hear the shofar. So um, our tradition is that young people under bat or bar mitzvah age are encouraged to do mitzvot. And in fact, some of them um, rabbinically they're obligated to do, but for the sake of training. But that's really what happens at a bar bat mitzvah, as you know, it's more, it's less about the bar and it's more about the mitzvah. And at that point, you have the same responsibilities as every other Jew. Now, there are liabilities because you have to face whatever consequences come, but there's also benefits that you can be the shliach for somebody else. So if you have an obligation to hear the shofar, which is everybody over bar bat mitzvah, then you can blow for somebody else. Thank you. So that's my segue and lead in to Merkaz students and other high school teens around our community to pick up a shofar and to learn how to blow it and to help fulfill the mitzvah of letting other people hear it and yourself as well. Merkaz registrations are ongoing. You can register for classes online and um, we often do workshops like this throughout the year. Uh, we will be virtual this year with some community service projects in person. But additionally, we hope the entire community will join us next Wednesday, September 16th at four o'clock as we circle JSS and Hollander House with love and um, allow all of us, whether we practice between now and then and have succeeded at learning to blow shofar or whether we're still practicing when we blow shofar from our car that each of the residents at the Jewish home will have the ability and at Hollander House to hear the sound of the shofar. Also, you can take videos of yourself practicing. We have students on our Merkaz Mobile Mitzvot who are making a video to be played on the internal channel at the uh, Jewish home uh, on their TV set um, so that they can hear it remotely as well that way. And we hope that everyone will join us and start the new year off by doing a wonderful mitzvah. And we're excited about it. And if you don't have a shofar, come anyway, toot your horn, we'll give out shofars to kids and this is a wonderful way to spend about a half an hour making this community, um, making noise in this community. Great. Shelley, thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Merkaz, for putting this together and for all of the wonderful things that Merkaz has done to support uh, folks in Jewish senior services and then the Hollander House and Jewish Family Service and others throughout the community during this really sur surreal year. Uh, Rabbi Greg, it occurred it, it, to me as I was, you know, as you were speaking that, that when we're talking about blowing into the shofar, what, one of the things that blowing is, is a, is a really big exhale. And I think that one of the things that, that all of us really need right now is just a really, yeah, a really big exhale. So my, my, my hope for you and for all of us who plan to blow a shofar this year is that it's an exhale that can bring us a sense of 
strength and a sense of renewal and that sense of that I think we're all looking for right now. And I think the, the, the best and only way uh, to close this webinar would be for the three of us to all blow our shofars together uh, with Shelly and me having cover from <laughs> Greg. Uh, in case we this is the best, this is the best sound so my chauffeur is ever going to make. <laughs> well, first, I want to say amen to that blessing you gave all of us, David. It was very, very nice. And uh, you should have a sweet and healthy year. And you too, Shelly, and plus everybody uh, listening and participating in the webinar. Okay. Thank Rabbi you. Greg, is there a blessing before saying the shofar? There is, but we're not going to do it now, but it's in any prayer book. Okay. So thank you, Beit Havarim. Thank you, Merkaz. Thank all of you who are participating with us tonight. And let's end with one big blast of the shofar. One, two, three. <laughs>